Yeah. Yes, with the glasses on. Come on up. Yeah. Now, if you were, if I met you in a, if I was, you know, working in a Zen temple or a monastery and you came in with a question, I would have just grabbed my staff and whacked you on the head. <laughs> and then we wouldn't have all these questions about a lack of vitality, right? Because you'd be going, oh. <laughs> that was pretty vital, all right. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately for both of us, we're not, though. We're in a different environment. Good afternoon. Hi, Ajay. I'm Craig. Hi, Craig. Um, since last year, uh, when I first saw you, mm-hmm. I've been experiencing this uh, tremendous openness, and it's been uh, quite wonderful. But uh, the question I have about is, uh, is all the pain that comes uh, with it. And um, what kind of pain? Well, it's, it's interesting. I've been having uh, tremendous amounts of physical pain. Mm-hmm. It actually started uh, maybe three years before uh, this awakeness uh, came to me, or this shift in, in my perspective. But I, I experienced... Um, like tremendous amounts of, uh, you know, back pain, mm-hmm. pain in my uh, nervous system. Yeah, I have all kinds of. Um, Did you write me the, the the question? Did you write it? Oh, no, somebody I, somebody gave me a question. They wrote down that's very almost identical to this. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you're asking it for everybody. Yeah, I have uh, all kinds of. Uh, strange things happening yeah with my mind like where i can't think mm-hmm. i can't remember names uh i mean you know it's it's fun and wonderful but also uh i know it's very quite awkward i know i know um and that part i can uh it's just quite okay yeah but I it's know. the uh the pain uh the whole energetic part of it. Yeah, and it's it's been going on for years, and you know I've done the all kinds of doctors, and yeah. I'll go see the chiropractor, and he'll say I have, you know, the energy of you know ten people in my body, and yeah, um, well you do, and uh, you know when I check in with it, I'll hear a voice that'll say, uh, like, get the hell out of the way. Good voice, pretty yeah. wise. And like when I have troubles with my mind, you know, I I feel like I can get out of the the way of that. And yeah. With my emotions, I can work with that. You know, I'm, of course, I drop them all often, but um, getting out of the way of this, uh, yeah, this force. And you know, sometimes I'll walk down the street, and I'll it'll just be it's nothing I'm doing. It's just tremendous opening. Mm-hmm. Other times I walk down the street and just be in incredible pain. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'll lay in bed and just be crying because I'm in so much. Like is so much pain. Like the equal opposite, as open as you were, yeah. you becomes <laughs> equally opposite, contracted. Yeah. 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 I get it. So. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Let me just say a few things. Whether it will be useful or not, we'll see. Okay. The first is the most basic part of this. Um, well, as you've been experiencing, that with any real sort of opening of consciousness, real shift, there is always an energetic component. For some people, it's rather slight. For other people, it can be very, very heavy, very, very intense. It's usually somewhere in the middle, but that that whole extreme, you know, and so... A whole energetic component, and it's not uncommon, especially if your your kind of your mind, your consciousness really opens up, that you get like your chiropractor said, you got the energy of ten people inside you, and basically he's probably pretty close to right, as you probably do have that kind of energy coursing through your system. I know how it is, um, 
And it's not something that your system, well, very few people's system is sort of readily adapted, readily able to easily handle that and incorporate that energy into their system. It's something that for most people, you, you literally takes their body years to adapt to it, to literally kind of get a, adapted to a whole new, much, much higher um, level of energy moving through their system. Whatever we want to call that. You know, traditionally I call it kundalini and all that kind of stuff, but I just call it energy because that's, it is energy. It's what kundalini is. Um, now, of course, that kind of energy will also put tremendous pressure on any places you're blocked, you're holding. Tremendous physical pain. And these kind of physical pains will will be very, very, you know, everyone will look at them and, you know, and everyone at the end of the day that people will kind of go shaking their heads, all the doctors and the chiropractors, you know, they're going to go, well, geez, I, I don't know. You know, I don't really know what's going on. don't know how to do it. It can have many, many different symptoms that will happen. Um, but the most difficult symptoms, a lot of the pain stuff happens because there's some way in which we're holding on. Now, in your case, we absolutely know there's holding on because you go through these opposites, which also isn't unusual, by the way, that as big and expanded and open and flowing and, you know, open hearted and free loving and all that that you are, that at some point you get the equal and opposite contraction. And this is really heavenly and this is really hellish when it goes the other direction, right? we can actually have a, f- a fair degree of spiritual clarity, um, a surprising degree of spiritual clarity, and still have at a very, very deep, deep place, it's very subtle, but it's very powerful, something that is holding on, right? Something that's holding on, because as wonderful as it is to be wide open, when you're wide open, that little you really isn't there. It's not really functioning, right? Something else is functioning. And to that little you, that is really problematic. Really, really terrifying. And I don't mean you're thinking about this stuff really consciously, but to that little, that little you, to know that it disappeared in those moments... Right, your conscious mind feels great. Your little that whatever is that little bit left, it's terrified. Yeah, and like, and sometimes it feels um, that little you almost feels so impersonal that it's um, like my biology itself, like mm-hmm. my body itself, or like the matter of of me. Mm-hmm. It is. It's all one continuum, right? Even right from a conceptual self, right down to the, your your cells and the way the way things fire in your muscles and your sinews and the way you you know, all of it's actually just all one continuum of one thing. So yes, a me is just not necessarily simply a little abstract idea floating around. That little abstract idea is actually imprinted into the, your whole biology, right? And it's imprinted in your biology to survive. It's the survival instinct that you, that every biological organism has. Right. And, and I don't know how to, to let go there. It's an irrational thing to do. I say this all the time to people. I would love to tell you how to let go there. I really would all I can tell you is what happens. And when, it, when the time is right, it, it'll happen. It, it will happen. You don't have to worry about that. It'll happen. But you can't make it happen. But the happening is just sort of... Oftentimes, at the moment of greatest intensity where you get this real that contraction and that real fear comes up, almost like of annihilation can arise and for some reason 
whatever that is, whether we call it a little me or whatever it is, it's psychological, biological, all that hooked together, it just, in its own way, just says yes to its own demise. You can't make it happen. You shouldn't even try to make it happen before it's time. One should not force it to happen. You can end up in a psych ward if you force it to happen. I'm not trying to scare you, by the way. I'm just telling you the way it is. If you try to force, force that to let go before it's really let go, it's not really good because it'll, kind of, it'll let go and then grab, and that's way, way worse. But the time will come. It'll just arise in you. That, that thing that's holding on, when it, that moment of anni- when it feels like it'll just be annihilated, something in you will just say, yes, okay. And it's irrational. There's no reason why. It just, it's just time. You know, it's no more rational than a fruit falling from a tree. You know, from a rational point of view, it can't be a good idea for a piece of fruit to fall from the tree. Do you know? But for the fruit to accomplish what its real destiny is, which is to make more trees, it has to fall. So for your spiritual, shall we call it, evolution to complete itself, that little bit of me has to fall, and it will fall when it's ready. Don't force it. Well, and sometimes, um, as you're saying that, I... uh... You know, like last night after I left here and you know, it felt like this huge, just all this openness is like trying to force itself down through my body. And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, oftentimes I just, uh, I just start crying and it's mm-hmm. like, I, like that's when I fall to my knees and then it just, it floods me and there's no... Uh, Moves through. There's no problem until yeah. the, the next day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And that, that I, you know, that's why I said I would, re- I would love to be able to give you a way to say this is how it will never, so it won't re- keep repeating itself. But I can't do that. And I can't do it with, in, with, with any honesty. I can, but I can just say, and sometimes just saying it, is a part of what helps to bring it about. That, like I said, that there will come a, mo- a time when that letting go will just really let go. You know? And it's, when it really lets go, it's a little bit different because when it really lets go, it's not um, cathartic. You know, the cathar- that kind of cathartic, like, ah, and then all of a sudden it moves through and and it's wonderful, and it's very cathartic, and it's, it's, it's lovely. What I'm speaking about is when it, when it arises for you, it, it, you'll kind of know that it's, you only know it in retrospect, but because it's not really, it's not really cathartic. It's more like um, something's there and then it's not. It's simple like that. Something there... People often associate what I'm saying with, you know, leaping off a hundred foot pole or, you know, taking a step off into the unknown. And it's very cathartic. And a lot of people have had very cathartic experiences, which are part of, part of it too. But this part of it, it's not really a cathartic thing at all. It's just, it happens and then it's, it's over. There's no residue. There's no cathartic. There's just, oh, oh, okay. I'll be darned. That's pretty much it. Kind of like that. So just talking about it, sometimes that in you that really understands what I'm saying, you know, the, the more conscious you, I know there's not much you can apply here, but the other part, the part in us that's the same in all of us that knows this, that that's, has its own, it's going to go through its own version of this. Just hearing it, just knowing that that this is what happens and it's totally natural that it happens this way. And it's also natural that it's resisted. You know? It makes good sense that it's resisted. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if you thought you were the only thing that exists, you wouldn't want to let go of yourself either. You see what I mean?
Thank you so much. Okay. The more you can relax with it, the better. And I know that's like a, it's like a stupid thing to say. I understand it's a stupid thing to say. But at certain moments, it might come, mean. I know, it might come back and be a little bit helpful. You know, who knows? Thank it's you. good to talk with you, though. Thank you. Yeah. These things usually do, I mean, I know, I, like I said, usually one goes through their own cycles of this before something really lets go. It might be one or two cycles, it might be 50, it might be 100 cycles of it, but it's rarely, you know, rarely does it, you know, you just go pop and then, ah, you know what I mean? There's not many Eckhart Tolls that go to bed and wake up and go, oh, everything's clear. Well, that's nice. Cool. Now spend the next 10 years, you know, trying to figure out how to move through life this way. And and that's going to be about it, you know, more or less. The the other 98%, 99% of the population, you know, they kind of have clarity. And they think, you know, it's all over and it's all done. And then they find out, well, it's not. And there's some other little thing to happen. And then they think, well, that's it. And then they go, well, that's it. Oh, that's it. And pretty about, about the time you stop waiting for anything to not happen or be the end or for something to totally complete itself, all of a sudden, one day, it's just like, oh, it's not happening. And it didn't announce itself. And it didn't tell you that. And it just, as the, one of my favorite Zen, he wasn't even a Zen master because he was a layman, which is a bad word. If you're a tr- in the traditions of monasticism, I found that when I used to hang out at monasteries, if they wanted to insult each other, they would call each other a layman. Oh, you're such a layman. You know, you're acting like it's like you fool you, you know. You're just like all the rest. Anyway, for all of us who are laymen, you'll be happy to know there is, is a great Zen master who was a layman, layman Pang, and layman Pang made his whole life. Him and his whole family were supposedly enlightened. His daughter, the most of them, and she could always lay anybody flat in Dharma combat, including her own father. And so they would go around and, uh, you know, talking to all the Zen masters, and they would out-Zen the Zen masters all over the place. So that was Layman Peng. Anyway, I love Layman Peng. He had a wonderful description of sort of... Um, I hate to talk in endpoints, but I don't know what you're talking about. His definition of enlightenment was just, he says, you know, it's like going to a job in the morning. At the end of the day, it's over and you just go home. That's about as close to the actual real thing that I've ever heard in my life. As at the end of the day, at some weird point, you might even not know when it started, but you just recognize it, it's just, it's over. And what do you do when it's over? You just go home. You just go about the rest of your life. Can't say, even define what it is that's over, but when it's over, it's over. And it's just like at the end of the day, the day's work is over. Nobody has to tell you. It's not a peak experience. It's not a big aha. It's just more like an I'll be damned. It's over. Really, 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 really simple. Really simple. Anyway, that's layman pain. For all of us laymen. So I know I went over. So I'll let you figure out when we're going to come back. I know you're good at it. Thank you.